Hey, welcome to the Closing Beat, everybody. Happy Tuesday, right? <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Uh, welcome to the Closing Beat Stock Market Update Show that we do every day here for you. Try to teach you something new. I promise you I'll mention something today that maybe you didn't know. Uh, well, I hope you didn't know. So that way you hit the thumbs up button or maybe check us out at jazzwealth.com. Spilled some water. It's water. I'm not drinking soda anymore. It's driving me nuts. Uh, so if I've been rude to you, sorry about that. By the way, we're fiduciary financial advisors here, SEC registered unlike most, and um, that's our job, right? Is to give you the advice that's best for you. If you don't take that advice, then it's not worth working with us. So if we ask you to leave, don't give me the sad face. Go on your way. Uh, but we're happy to help. We focus on uh, building our own investments here, our own portfolios, teaching you how they, they work, uh, yada yada sales pitch stuff. Let's get started. So, uh, stock market today, we attempted to recover some of yesterday. Did you see what happened there? N not much, really. If you look at yesterday's decline, it's a little bit of a recovery from today. Got a little action after hours, just kind of that late positioning ahead of the uh, Georgia elections. Got a little drama on TV tonight, and I don't think that includes The Bachelor, right? The Bachelor doesn't start today, does it? No idea. You would know. No? Oh, I used to love that. Oh, used to love The Bachelor. He's not a Bachelor guy anymore. Where's your camera, man? Is it on? Okay, so uh, we're going to start bringing Cody into this as well for a little bit. He can give his comments on the Bachelor updates and stuff. You should be the Bachelor, to be honest. Cody could be the Bachelor. Anyways, let's take a look here. So not a whole lot going on. Um, the market started off yesterday down 1.3% on day one. Uh, we wondered actually how that performance actually plays into the rest of the year. On our research site, uh, is it up? Uh, so we'll get that posted uh, after the show, right? So we'll post that Average performance in a year following uh, a big loss on day one. Does it mean anything? Is it just kind of hogwash or does it actually uh, result in anything? Long story short, not only does it mean any, uh, mean something, it means average lower returns and it means a wide uh, possibility of outcomes. Really fascinating there. So we're going to cover that on the research site. You're welcome to join. It's uh, 13 bucks a month if you want to join. If you can't be a customer, if you are a customer, then it's in there for free. It's in our new Dojo portal, which by the way, the Dojo portal with your performance and everything will be going live this week. So super excited about that. Anyways, let's take a look because we were talking about the markets I got sidetracked you know I did it okay look at the Russell today the Russell was your best performing index uh, and has been going into the latter part of last year the Russell really woke up small cap funds really did well if you were participating there happen to notice anything uh, small cap value was your big leader today 2.1 percent you could use like the IWN if you want to take a look hinting at a breakout here this is a small cap value fund uh, it was the best performing area. Small cap index, which would be your maybe your IWM, if you want to look at those ETFs, uh, did really well uh, also. If you look inside there, you're going to have, uh, surprisingly, steel. Uh, steel, some of the better areas today. You got U.S. Steel, big breakout or big uh, push higher today, up 6% on the day. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs, CLF is the symbol there, getting a little extended, uh, but that had an 8% gain on the day. And uh, take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond. It's not out of it yet. Don't count these guys out of it yet here. Their margins are higher every quarter. Costs are dropping, uh, which means lower costs, higher margins. It means a profit, right? Actually, can I show you guys that? You want to see something real quick? Uh, here is Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, here's Bed Bath & Beyond. Let's go ahead and put in there uh, total expenses, right? You got expenses moving lower here. It's a five-year chart, but we're looking back to see expenses dropping. They got a lot of restructuring going on of what they're working on. They just launched same-day delivery as well, so that's likely to help the top line there. But anyways, you've got decline in total expenses. Uh, we've got a... Re uh, we, well, there you go. You can see their uh, profit margin moving higher. Sorry, the, the colors changed. I don't know why that happened, but profit margin moving higher, total expenses moving lower in a sharp kind of a way there. They're looking good. Also, digital sales for Bed Bath & Beyond now account for 32% of total sales. That's important because they wanted to make that move there and they actually got the ability to do that. You can... Um, See if you, I don't know if you look deeper into this, but you got 32% of their total sales come online. Half of those sales come from the buy online, pick up in store uh, sort of effort that they've had there. So doing really well there. They've also been restructuring, cost cutting, outsourcing, getting rid of 12 million spoons. Like when you go in there, there's a whole row of spoons. They just, now you have a few to choose from. If not, then that's what your store is about to have there. Uh, so they're working on that. And also, if you didn't know, they own uh, World Market. You guys have a World Market by you? Uh, you probably have a Bye Bye Baby. They also own them, but uh, World Market. That's, uh, we got a handful of those springing up here around us. The moral of the story was that, uh, hey, Bed Bath & Beyond uh, doing their thing there. They have fallen out of the headlines a little bit, but they're, they're 
doing what they got to do. Let's go to the NASDAQ here. China stocks were the ones that were in the lead today. Uh, if you look at something like Pin Duo Duo breaking a new highs there, almost a 200 bucks. It's incredible. You got JD.com breaking out, looking really good there. We happen to own it, so we're excited to see that. Other than that, you got Apple and Amazon. They were your biggest contributors. So despite the large moves in the Chinese names today, uh, Apple and Amazon, biggest contributors to the gains here in the NASDAQ today. And if we look at the S&P, it's all energy, baby. There you go. S&P 500, all energy. It's going to be, uh, man, all of our top performers in our portfolios today were related to energy. If you're looking at some of the bigger gainers there, you're going to have Occidental Petroleum, Fang, which is Diamondback Energy. I'm going to do a little piece on this in the research site to get more specific about what they do, acquisitions they've made, and sort of their goals going forward, just to give you the insights there. Uh, we happen to own it, so we're excited about that one there. Uh, among the top gainers today, um, Everything, everything was higher uh, except for ethanol. If you're looking through the different areas, Brent, crude, heating oil, natural gas, uh, Arbob, all higher on the day and um, not bad. So if you look at the S&P 500 though, <laughs> because of the weighting, Apple and Amazon were still your biggest contributors on an individual stock basis, even though they only gained 1% here on Amazon, uh, but that's how you go there. Now, Yesterday, uh, we talked about tax gain selling and how people, we've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, um, how if you had a large taxable gain, you were not likely going to sell before December 31st, you would wait until after. And so yesterday with the market selling off, we wondered, is that actually tax gain selling? So what we did, we took a look and I'll see if I can pop it up here. We confirmed that that is actually the case. If you take and break the market into deciles, so this is 10 uh, little areas here made up of groups of 10, and you say, all right, here's what I wanna do. I wanna see the average performance yesterday of the stocks that were the best performing in the second half of 2019. Then I wanna see the average performance yesterday of the second best uh, performers in the second half of 2020, uh, sorry, 2020. Ugh. Uh, then I want to see the third best and the fourth best and so on and so on, all the way down to the average performance of all the stocks in this group that were the worst performing in the second half of 2020. So, <coughs> excuse me. So what you have here is we can confirm that the best performers at the end of last year were the ones that sold off the most. They sold off an average of 2.5% just yesterday. The second best performers at the end of last year were the ones that were sold off the second most yesterday. So it's kind of a fun way to take a look at it. It takes a little bit of work to put this together, but it's fun to explain. And so now you can see that people were taking their profits. They were dying to take their profits on the stocks that they had large gains in. And we essentially just confirmed that there for you so you can take a look. Hey, if you need more confirmation about uh, maybe different financial topics and things like that, check out our FinTips videos. We got some cool ones this week. Adding to your income in retirement uh, by not cutting costs, right? How do we find extra money uh, to make that happen? So we got a model going for you there. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do a video uh, you see it on the bottom right hand corner there, how to fix mistakes you made in 2020. We've got a lot of people making some mistakes in 2020. You can fix it. It's not a big deal. Just ask your advisor or get some help. Make sure they can adjust that for you. And uh, Friday, I'm going to do 2021 predictions. Also, I was thinking of taking our little handy iPhone that we don't really use and sharing a little bit about what do I do at night? What have I been doing at night for the last, eh, what, six months, three months, something like that? You know, I don't stop. What's going on? What's old Dustin doing tonight? So I uh, may have some fun things to share with you or could be a flop. I don't know. Could just be a waste of time. And you guys, you know, you tell me it's a waste of time. Um, all right. What do we want to do here? Let's go to the sector breakdown and uh, take care of that. I will try to just make this happen here. Uh -huh. There we go. All right. Here's the sectors. Um, if you're one of our customers, you can actually use this. It's in your dojo. We put it up there for you to use as well. So you know what we're looking at. Here's the one day performance of all the sectors in the S&P 500. As always, your light green, lime greeny neon thing there is going to be energy. Killed it. Great day, 4.5% energy higher today. OPEC Plus made their deal. Uh, actually, Saudi Arabia is going to cut a million barrels a day. So they really stepped up this time. They've always been hesitant in the past. If you're looking inside of energy and you want to see the best performers, first of all, you can tell up here, it's a broad rally. Everything in the green today looking really, really good there. Exxon Mobil and Chevron are your biggest contributors. If you take a look, they're going to be off here to the right. What this is is showing you the weighting of the particular symbol relative to its gain today. And you're not misreading that. We, that's not a mistake on our part. Look at the amount of stocks today that gained between 8 and 10%. 
It's all these guys up here. You got Occidental Petroleum, Diamondback, Apache Marathon. Thankfully, we own some of those, so happy to see that. And that's basically the energy space today. I'm gonna move over real quick here to financials. We're gonna take a look inside of there because you don't see a broad rally. They didn't have a horrible day, but you don't see a broad rally. So we're looking down here wondering, What's going on? What's with the financials there? It's going to be your insurers and your exchanges. Moody's, S&P Global, MSCI, Market Access, considered an exchange if you look inside of that one. And their peers, you're going to find, uh-oh, all of them just had a bad day. That was your big drag overall. Those continue to pull back. They're not bad stocks. I'm going to zoom out here a year. You look at something like Market Access, just in the short term, it's been pulling back. It looks like a big gobbledy mess in there, but hang out with me for a second. You go to uh, MSCI, same thing. It's just coming off of highs. These are all good stocks. They're just not participating at the moment. Could also be that you've got some profit taking going on in some of those because they had a great second part of their uh, first part of the year last year. So that could be the case. Uh, lastly, I just want to cover industrials. If we take a look at industrials, not all kinds of strength going on there, but you're going to notice Boeing up here at the top and all of their peers did well. Boeing uh, off the 50-day moving average. Can I zoom in a little for you? There we go. Oh, it works with the mouse wheel. Uh, so off the 50-day moving average there, United Airlines is going to be the same thing. Handful of names in the mix. We'll talk about DE, uh, John Deere here in a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, that's not bad. So all in all, not looking too bad there. We'll go over to the new highs and lows of the day so you guys can see what's going on here. 19 new highs on the day. That's what the little scroller says. All but two of them gained over uh, 1% on the day. So it was a really good day for those that were that hit new highs. I'll go through a few of them that you could see on the right-hand side of your screen. Auburn Mail, here we go. It broke out to new highs here today. Um, this one's exciting. It's the, think of it as the, the focus by them right now is low cost lithium production. That's what they're trying to do. So they're, they're, they're really trying to ride that wave of, well, the, EV market, right? And so this is sort of the EV derivative. You don't want to play Tesla or Neo or something. People are going to the producers like this. The problem is there's a lot of supply out there right now, and these guys are the low-cost leaders, so they're not hurt as much and, in fact, benefiting from it. Um, but there's a lot of extra supply of lithium. That's going to weigh into things going on here. Nonetheless, made new highs on the day. Not too bad. Expedia, we happen to own this one, hit new highs here today. Uh, the big focus on Expedia so far over the last couple of weeks has been that cancellations are dropping off. In other words, people were booking stuff and then uh, they were canceling them, they were scared of the virus or whatever. That's all drying off. People are now booking uh, travel, uh, not necessarily cruises, but flights and hotels and stuff, and they're not canceling them. They're bound and determined to go on this vacation. And so that's a big reason for the rally there. Um, Expedia uh, is broken into a couple categories here. If you've ever wondered like how they make their money, you got Expedia, uh, which is about 87, uh, 78 percent of their revenue. That includes Orbitz, Travelocity, cheap tickets, some of the names you may be familiar with. Then they have another group, Trivago. You've seen the commercials there. It's about 7.8 percent of their revenues. And then they have VRBO, which is rapidly making up a lot of their revenues there. Uh, that's 11 percent, somewhere in there. Uh, so that's Expedia and uh, new, new highs today. A little background on them. Uh, FCX, I won't go over all kinds of geeky stuff on every one of these, but FCX there, basically just continuing the breakout. That's the one that I missed. I didn't even bring it up to you guys. Didn't see it, didn't notice it. I'm sorry, they're a copper company. Copper and gold is really what they're focused on and it's continuing with the breakout there. John Deere happens to be the only farm machinery name in the S&P 500. Bet you didn't know that, huh? You would have thought Caterpillar. Anyways, that one's looking good. Steady, consistent uptrend here, 2.5% on the day. Uh, they've got a lot of good things going for them. They spend very little on R&D, something like 8% uh, of their total revenues on R&D, which I believe is lower than Caterpillar, but uh, that stands out there. You got Goldman Sachs hitting new highs there, 2.25%. It was what was underperforming the industry. So if you look at the financials, up about 20%. You look at Goldman Sachs, now it's almost up 40% over the last three months. So um, it was underperforming. It's now rapidly outperforming. They've been on a buying spree all through 2018, 2019, and also 2020, which included Folio, the company that we work for. And they're putting their ducks in a row, going out, spending money in the right places so they can compete a little bit more. Looking good. Uh, all right, Waters. Uh, I'm not really interested in this company, to be honest. They uh, they make products that pharmaceutical companies use to produce their pharmaceuticals. And to me, it's boring. I don't understand it, so I don't really focus on these. What I would warn about if you have this stock or if you're thinking about investing in it is this company 
did something really unique that could be a problem for them in the long run. They, uh, they have fixed price contracts, basically, with their uh, producers and, their, and the people that they sell their products to. However, most of them are overseas, right? So the contract is fixed to a price that they will generate in revenue. Uh, however, if you're worried about currency fluctuations, that's a negative. So if you're not worried about currency fluctuations, then it doesn't matter. But anytime a company is expected to get paid X and there's no chance of them changing that amount, what happens if there's a sudden change in the dollar or the local currency they're working in? Mainly, I think I'm talking about the dollar here. All right, you got Mosaic as the last one there. Broke out to new highs there. These guys make, um, well, you know what Mosaic does. Anyways, um, analysts, by the way, are focused on this one because we got earnings season coming up. Uh, so you got new highs. Everything's looking good. The focus is on China demand for phosphates. That's been dropping. That's been brought up in every one of the last analyst calls there. It's something that uh, people, have been, uh, the analysts themselves have been focused on. Work button. It's not working. There we go. Now it's going to hiccup again. Hi. Okay, there we go. Didn't like me giving out the goods, man. Uh, anyways, you'll expect to see lots of questions from analysts on Chinese uh, phosphate uh, shipments, right? Are we shipping them more and more because demand's really low thanks to the virus, which is kind of like that with everything. Uh, but demand for their phosphates, which is a big deal for Mosaic, um, has just been falling like a rock. So anyways, that's uh, basically all I have for the new highs and lows. Uh, let's move on to stocks in the news. Stocks in the news. First up, Dr. Horton, man, you made the news, although your stock fell. Uh, was named the top home builder at Bank of America uh, today. They were very excited about that, and the stock still sold off. That's fine. Let us sell off somewhere around 62 if you're interested in that. Uh, Moderna, you know, it's trying. They're trying. It's trying to come off the 50-day there. Had a nice little pullback overall. Moderna, uh, if you saw overnight, uh, Israel signed their deal with them for the uh, vaccine. Uh, spent a lot of money, but uh, there you go. Uh, there we go. We got Jefferies hitting new highs here as well today, but it did pull back. Uh, they beat on earnings by 62 cents, raised their dividend by a third. They went from a dollar seven to a dollar eleven. Yeah, dollar seven to a dollar eleven. Uh, so good for them. Uh, what else do we have here for you? Where's my list? Netflix. And Netflix today, a bit of a choppy mess. I give you that. It's not really that exciting to look at lately. Um, Bridgerton. I don't know. I don't watch Netflix. Bridgerton was the top streamed show between Christmas and New Year's. Have you ever heard of Bridgerton? No. Crickets. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but if you watched it, it apparently was a top streamed show over the break. Uh, really helped the stock that much, but uh, I know content's going to be an issue going forward, so we'll probably start talking about that more. Uh, Qcom, 2.6% higher today. Uh, CEO left the company. Um, I think, I don't know if they have... Um, they're a new guy there. I'm not familiar with who that is. Anyways, those are stocks in the news. Oh, also Boeing. They're starting to deliver those 737 Maxes again, so we can start emptying the parking lots and everything of all those planes. That's good news. Uh, I'll take your questions. The stream will catch up here, so if I miss it, don't worry. Just let it sit for a second. Um, earn uh, dividends. You got Oracle, 24%. And remember, Enphase is being re uh, replacing Tiffany in the S&P 500. Uh, so that change will take place later this week. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the assumption. If the Democrats win in Georgia, we're all getting more money. Yeah. I don't get it. Not my thing, but we'll see. Nothing you can do about it. We'll watch and see what happens tonight. If you like the drama, uh, there's likely going to be some drama there, but uh, we'll see. I have uh, no comments on what happens. I really don't know. Like, to be honest with you, I don't watch uh, regular news anymore. I, I just, I don't, I don't subscribe to that, uh, those channels or anything. So I can watch like, what is it? Um, you know, the news you get at the airports, whatever that, that seems to look like what it is. That's on Pluto. I watch Pluto and there's all the news things, uh, cheddar and stuff. I don't really watch any of that though. Not my thing. Yep. Uh, <laughs> All right, we got up 22% on Diamondback. Wanted to add more, but with surprise, OPEC announcement, you think you missed your chance. No, it was a good day. It was a good day, but I think the long-term vision of Diamondback, just because I've been studying it upside down and sideways, uh, is very good. If you saw what they've done lately with acquisitions to be not only upstream, midstream, downstream, uh, they want to basically conquer everything, and they got some really good deals to do that. So I think if you're looking at it for a mid to long-term play, you'd be just fine. You'll be fine. Hang in there. It might not be the best time to add. I would agree with that. You have great days. Well, I'll sit back. I'll wait till people aren't so excited if I'm going to add to that position. 
That I could agree with. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, you like your Alibaba? I saw that was higher today because we know Jack Ma is not officially missing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, five and a half percent to the upside. So we talked about this before, right? When a stock falls out of bed like that, you don't chase it right away. See what happened? There was no hurry. Granted, that's a $20 range, but it's expensive stock. Now it's starting to wake up. You've got forms of support to use. You've got people committed. That's a big, big kind of a lesson there. I wish there was a way we could cut all that together and just make one, uh, one thing there. Ashish, thoughts on oil for 2021? Well, I shared some of the stats uh, as well as how oil tends to perform after having large down days or down years. Uh, but in our Friday video, I'll just give it to you. I'm, I'm basically uh, saying I think oil is going to be higher. Here's the actual reason I'm saying that. Oil's returns after having 10% down years or more. So we looked through uh, last 40 years and found that. I shared this yesterday as well to see what the average performance is going forward. You got a real reason to believe oil's got a chance to bounce there. So I'm going to jump on the wagon of the stats and uh, make that my out so that I can say, I believe the stats will hold true this year and not say, well, my opinion is. Because I get in trouble for the old opinion. So that's, you ever notice that? Like, why does Dustin give so many stats away? It's because I'm just going by the numbers, right? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just going by the numbers. That keeps me out of trouble. Coca-Cola, unfortunately, yeah. Last two days have pulled back on Coke very sharply, by the way. I don't like that. Uh, what it likely means is if it doesn't stop right in here, if you don't see it stop in this uptrend here, now you're going back to sideways again. So it's really frustrating. You can see all this dead money here for months and months. You hope that this just shakes it off. It's not looking good, but uh, we'll see. That part I don't like. Hey, you wouldn't know it's election day. Everybody's talking about politics out there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I don't have an opinion. I just follow the stats, man. That's what I do for the SEC that's watching. Hey, anyways, I'll wrap it up there. Before I say something I shouldn't say, you guys make me, you know, you, you make me do that stuff. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow to do this all over again. Thank you so much for your support and hanging out and uh, enjoy.